What's up guys, my name is Nick and you're watching Just Because. Today, due to popular demand and a few requests, I am going to go through a beginner's tutorial on how to use GarageBand loops to make an awesome song. So let's get started, we're just going to start an empty project. Alright, so because we're using GarageBand's pre-made loops, we're not going to be needing the keyboard. Uh, the loops are located up on the right hand side over here. And as you can see, there are lots of loops and you can narrow them down however you like. They're divided into, um, you know, instruments or moods and things like that. So what you want to do, um, just some of the simple workings of GarageBand, you can click and drag your beats onto the interface and then you've got your play button up here all right now uh, a few tricks that you might find helpful um, when working with GarageBand is to learn how to extend your loops which you can do just by clicking on the end of the loop and dragging you can also um, drag your cursor here and split the loop. You have to make sure that it's highlighted when you do and go into edit and split regions at playhead. You'll see that there's lots of commands uh, that you can, you can just use your keyboard uh, to do it if you get uh, good at it. All right, so let's get down to business. Um, when I make my GarageBand songs, I recognize that a, a good garage band song usually has three main components it'll have your beats or drums it'll have your bass and it'll also have what i like to call your party piece or it, it's basically what gives the song its flavor i i often use synths to produce the unique sound of the song now deciding which loops to use is really a matter of trial and error and uh, developing a sound that you uh, like and you might be surprised by which loops go together well so it's worthwhile um, looking through a lot of the loops to get the best sound that you can all right so I'm just gonna get started with it you can start with a synth line or the drums themselves you probably want to bring in the drums later because a uh, good rule of thumb is to gradually build up your song with the addition of loops as it progresses. So I'm going to try and start with a synth line. Alright, so I found a sound that I particularly like and I will extend it because I'm going to use it for quite a bit of the song. This is what it sounds like. <laughs> And you can see the numbers up here. In general, a song will go, it says signature 4-4 four, four here, so you complete a, a general loop in, in four um, sets of beats here. So that's a good spot to add in your, your next song instead of doing it, you know, after every single number. So once again, just drag and drop them and see if you're liking the sound. All right, so there it's getting a bit repetitive, so you wanna get straight onto it with adding more loops, and I think it's about time to add in a drum beat, so I'll get onto that. All right, so I have now added the, sec the two other ingredients, the the beat and the bass as well so now and you can see how I've slowly built up the song as well so the end sound that we have now is like this now soon you'll find that you can't just keep adding on sounds uh, because it's going to get too too clumped up and you, you're gonna have like one sound trying to overpower the other it just gets really messy after a while so and and yet 
we're still only at 47 seconds. So if you want a full length song, I recommend trying to transition into a different sound in the same song. If you listen to my garage band songs, you'll notice there's about, you know, usually three or four different uh, segments to the song. Now, if you do this, I have an important hint for you. Every time I make one of these songs, I ensure that it, it stays connected as a single song by bringing together or taking through one or two of these loops into the next sort of sound that you're developing. Okay, so by dragging one or two of these sounds through with your next uh, sound that you're trying to make, you ensure that, you know, it, you can still hear that it's the same song and it flows very nicely. So I'm going to attempt to do that now. Okay, so um, this is where we were at and I have added on a second section to the song and I chose in this case to bring this uh, sound here which is quite an important sound in building up this segment. I brought it through and it continues through the second section so that your song still feels connected, you can still tell it's a single song, yet you've transitioned into quite a different sound at the same time. Um, now a few um, tips on what you can start to play around with is if you look at this button up here you can see there's these yellow lines and they control all sorts of things. In this song I've used them to manipulate the volume of the track and so here you'll see that this uh, loop gradually descends in volume while this one increases in volume but you'll notice you can also do things like echo and pan and reverb and all sorts of things, lots of things to play around with there. You can change the speed of the song up here at currently at 120 beats per minute. You can speed it up or slow it down. And what you might find um, useful is to add a bit of a um, rising effect to give extra, if uh, to add an extra punch to changes that you make in the song, like this one. So if you add that in here somewhere, you can get a pretty cool sound happening. I will add that um, to put an ending to one of these songs, I usually like to bring the most important loops of each segment of the song together at the end. Uh, sort of to finish off the song as a whole um, and if you listen through my songs you'll notice that some of the important loops throughout the song are put together in the end and that is all that I have for you so the transition sounds a bit like this So there you have it. So really all there is to it, all there is to making a good garage band song using the loops already provided is to remember that your song should have a beat, a bass and a party piece and if you want to extend it to a full length song while keeping it interesting, um, you'll want to experiment with having slightly different sounds as your song evolves but remembering to bring one or two loops through that transition to make sure that your song is, is connected. And um, as for, you know, actually making a good song, it, it is a bit up to your own liking. It's a bit of trial and error, and if there's a combination of loops that you think sounds good, then that's what you should go with. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Um, please comment below if you have any feedback or if you found it helpful or what you think I should have done differently. Um, and good luck with your garage band music. <laughs>